Hi everyone, Dr. David Perlmutter here. You know, it's almost trendy now to talk about GMO foods and avoiding GMO foods. And oftentimes when I lecture and ask that question as to why GMOs are a danger, I don't really get uh, much of an answer. So uh, in today's presentation, I'd like to focus on actually why it is that GMO food really represents a threat to your health. So let's talk about what exactly this is all about. What is, uh, what is the real danger of GMO? And again, is this just to be considered trendy? What is going on when we are consuming GMO foods? And what we've learned is that GMO means that the seeds of the corn and the soy, for example, have been modified so that the farmers can spray these crops with herbicides to kill weeds. And the herbicide that is used is like you find in Roundup, it's called glyphosate. And it turns out that glyphosate is now being used globally to the tune of 1.35 million metric tons. And that uh, we are now seeing what are called glyphosate ready, uh, genetically modified crops. So one of the main reasons that uh, GMO seeds exist is to allow farmers to spray the very food that we then eat uh, with a powerful herbicide called glyphosate, the active ingredient in Roundup. Now, many of you will recall I recently interviewed Dr. Stephanie Seneff uh, from MIT, who's done an amazing amount of work uh, looking at the dangers of glyphosate. This is actually uh, one from one of her reports. And what she has demonstrated is that exposure to glyphosate that is found on many of these GMO crops changes the human microbiome. It also uh, has an effect on vitamin D. It, it, it keeps us from uh, binding and uh, absorbing uh, iron, cobalt, molybdenum, copper, and has an effect on uh, amino acids like tryptophan and tyrosine, which are the precursors for serotonin and dopamine, respectively. Mainly, though, my concern is the changes in the microbiome, the gut bacteria, that happen when we are exposed to glyphosate. How interesting it is that in this recent report appearing uh, in the very highly respected journal, The Lancet, uh, in March of 2015, that the World Health Organization indicated that yes, glyphosate is a broad spectrum herbicide uh, that's used in more than 750 different products used in agriculture, forestry, urban, and even around the home. That's what people are spraying on the sidewalks to keep the wheels, uh, weeds from growing, but that this glyphosate, according to this working group of the World Health Organization, is probably cancer-causing to humans. Well, you're probably wondering, how can this be? How does glyphosate work? Let's explore how glyphosate works. We've already talked about the fact that glyphosate, the active ingredient in Roundup, is in fact damaging to the human microbiome. It does so because glyphosate is an antibiotic. And as a matter of fact, uh, here is the patent, the original patent for uh, glyphosate as an antibiotic. Happened way back in uh, about uh, August of 2003, but ultimately was published in 2010. It is an antibiotic. Well, the question would then be, uh, how does this relate to the World Health Organization calling glyphosate a probable human carcinogen? Could uh, an antibiotic or antibiotics in general be related to cancer risk? Well, for the answer to that question, we turn back to the Journal of the American Medical Association way back in the year uh, 2004 uh, when they talked about the increased risk of breast cancer in women who had been exposed to antibiotics. A fairly large study, over 2,000 women in Denmark compared to close to 8,000 random controls. And in Denmark, they keep really a very strict uh, records about who's taking what and what illnesses people develop. And they were able to determine that over a 7.5 year period of time, that there was a significant correlation of breast cancer risk uh, depending on how many days a woman took an antibiotic. Now, uh, this study 
uh, indicated that there was a, a significant relationship between the number of days that a woman took antibiotics and risk for breast cancer. And as they state here, all classes of antibiotics were associated with increased risk. Again, why does this happen? And their conclusion was that antibiotics have effects on the intestinal microflora and on immune and inflammatory responses, which I will indicate are governed by our intestinal bacteria, our intestinal microflora. So this really uh, changes the playing field a little bit in terms of why we should vote with our wallets and avoid uh, genetically modified foods. So again, uh, what we've learned about GMO foods is that they pave the way for our food to be treated with a powerful herbicide called glyphosate. And glyphosate, as you've now seen, uh, is really a significant threat to our health, probably through the changes that it imparts on our microbiome, on our gut bacteria. This is why we want to vote with our wallets and really opt for cho choices that uh, are non-GMO. We want to look for that uh, certified non-GMO label, and those are the foods that we should be eating. Thanks for joining me. I'm Dr. David Perlmutter.